Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of FTB Interactions. Last time we set up our farm to automate the Dandelion. Uh, this will produce mana for us which gives us clay and we're up to currently 21 stacks. Uh, this is shut off right now as I've added a, a little shut off switch with the use of a piston which is going to block the lava and stop the sand from forming. I just have this hooked up to a barrel comparator signal. I'm using integrated dynamics again for that. It's just to stop wasting mana when this barrel is full. I also just got done crafting this flux bore. I took it all the way up to signalum tier. So this isn't this is really isn't too bad a recipe, but it's it's useful for what I'm gonna be doing today, which is building our blood magic altar. Oh hello. Yeah, I have to do something about the mobs around this place. They are getting really bad. And, and in fact, I just died again. Oh, an uh, Enderman. I need your pearls, please. Oh, come on. Today, I would like to start blood magic, and we're going to put it downstairs. I started setting up this little staircase from our main room, and I put some walls on this place as well. I already started with the first few quests, so I got the skull fire sword already. This gives us a weather skeleton skull and some levels. Next, let's see about making our blood magic altar. So this takes an obsidian skull, which is not too bad now that we have the wither skeleton skull. Some rock wool, which I just made there, uh, it's just some sand, wool and water. Gold plates and a demonic will. Give me your will, please. Thank you. So there's our obsidian skull. And the blood altar. This gives us some red heart canisters and some efficiency runes. Oh nice, does this give us give us permanent extra hearts? Oh but it only goes in the head slot. Oh that's unfortunate. I can't put these anywhere else. Okay, we wear the hearts then. Next we need somewhere to put the altar. I really don't want to set it up somewhere temporary. I want to get somewhere permanent set up right now. So yeah, I've got some digging to do and that's where the flux bore is going to come in. Okay guys, so I got most of the area dug out here, and I've laid out the enough space for a tier 6 blood altar. There's only one slight issue, and that is, I don't think I've left myself enough clearance here. I would like to put the roof on this level here, uh, to leave two blocks in order to run wiring underneath uh, on that floor there. So I can run things like applied energistics all over the place. It seems very low, so uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Alright, so I got the room built, uh, that's enough building for now as I've completely run out of all stone and blocks, I'll have to smelt some more stone. Also yeah, creeper explosions. So now let's move on with the quests. So it wants us to make a weak blood orb and for that we're going to have to generate blood or LP for our network. And to do that we can actually use deep mob learning in this pack. This digital mob agonizer will basically run DML simulations using polymer clay and that will fill your life essence network from blood magic. So we're definitely going to be making use of this. However, getting one of these means uh, starting DML also, so I think we should maybe just start with that first. Let's do some basic DML. So simulation chamber, what likes the recipe in this pack? Actually, very easy. This may even be easier than Omni Factory. Quite a bit of obsidian though. And the data model? Yeah, this isn't bad. I'll make a few of each. We were only able to make the one simulation chamber because I don't have enough, quite enough ender pearls yet. 
But I made 16 blank data models and a trial keystone and a handful of trial keys. So I think for now we're going to leave the trial keystones and the trial keys alone. So we'll just put them in there. We have to decide which model we're going to use though. So um, I was having a look at some of these. I think we're just going to do the zombie one to begin with. So there's a, there's a tab here for deep mob learning that shows you the amount of blood that you get at each tier of data model. So at basic here, we only get 10 millet buckets per tick. And as you increase the, the data, you get more blood, obviously. So to level these guys up, we're also going to need the simulation chamber. So I set this up here for polymer clay. This is not its permanent location. I, I, I'm just not quite sure how expansive we have to be with DML. It's quite likely I'll set up a, a full room for it dedicated to DML. But for now, this will do us. Um, so we have clay input here, and then a plastic chicken, which gives us plastic enriched eggs. And then these are just alloy smelted together and produce our polymer clay. I made a new alloy smelter for this. And the way I'm powering these is with this Spectre Energy. Uh, we talked about this last time. We set up this tree farm outside be behind our farms, and this has been running quite a lot, but still it's very, very, very slow. So I, d I don't quite have enough yet to uh, clean up those cables yet, which is why they're still a mess. <laughs> I think since the zombie one is the cheapest at 80 RF a tick, um, as you can see there, the wither skeleton is 880 RF a tick, and there's no way we can power that right now. Uh, we will have to upgrade our power in the near future going into HV here. We could also pick creeper, to be honest. Let let's see what creeper gives. Just gunpowder? I mean, eventually we're going to have them all, so I think we'll just do zombie for now. So there's the zombie model. So to level this guy up we have to put it in our deep learner and then kill one mob with this in our inventory I think. Or I don't know if it has to be in your offhand but yeah so we just have to kill one zombie to take it up to basic tier. Oh it's actually six we need. You can see in the top left corner there. Four to go. Alright we've reached basic tier and now we can level up in the simulation chamber using our polymer clay. And we don't have to manually kill the mobs anymore. So we're just going to put it in our simulation chamber and then... Oh, this also needs power, of course. Uh, so uh, yeah, I made a few of these spectre coils. They're actually kind of difficult to make at this point. It takes some vacuum tubes, which are easy. Uh, but this spectre ing lens takes these spectre ingots, which take the ectoplasm. And this takes a long, long time to grow. And then it just takes some redstone, which is fine. I have plenty of that. And red alloy wire, that's also fine. But yeah, I wasn't able to, able to make that many of them. And these are only the basic ones as well, so they have a limit of 100 or 1,024 RF a tick. But now this guy's going to run and it's going to occasionally give us pristine matters. Uh, a bunch of different things, but I'm going to let this guy level up a bit. To power those spectre coils, we have to input energy into a spectre energy injector. And so I made one of these CEUs at MV. I just stuck some lithium batteries in there. I put it next to our main power output from these generators and then into the spectre energy injector and then the spectre coils that I put on the simulation chamber there can extract the energy from this. While we wait on that guy leveling up a little bit more so we can continue with the blood magic let's uh, switch back to a little bit more Greg tech actually. So over the last day or so our blast furnaces have been running more or less all the time I've been on uh, for stainless steel so let's move on to make some HV components I think. So the HV stuff is more or less the same as all the other tiers. It's just a, a stainless steel instead of aluminium or steel, a LV and MV. So I think I'm just going to use a full stack of stainless steel here, make some HV machine casings. And then we need the hulls, which is, oh, this, this is gold cable for the HV one. Okay, I'll have to make some a batch of that then. Luckily, I have a lot of gold from mining that huge iron vein. And I'm still just processing all the ores manually, but... um. I still don't think it's worth setting up full ore processing yet, since we're only in MV. You might be wondering how, why you can hear so many zombies down there, and I I, put an, I summoned another villager. And he's somewhere down there. Yeah, there he is there. <laughs> Look at all the zombies after him. Our other one that we had originally died, that was in the, the first base. I don't really fancy listening to those guys all day, so we're going to make a sound muffler. Much better. I made some gold cable and there is our machine hulls and several quests it looks like. 
Nice, so once again, the next steps for us in HV is for the next tier of circuits, as well as the HV components. This time though is quite a big jump up, as uh, for these processors we need to make epoxy, and epoxy is quite a, a process to make. However, I think we're going to hold off on making epoxy. Uh, there is of, obviously two tiers of circuits in HV. The processor assembly is a little bit more expensive, but we can get away with doing this with the plastic boards, which we already have. This is just made from the polyethylene. And then all we need is some RAM, which is green sapphire lens rather than the ruby I think we're using right now. Some SMDs, small coils, and fine, fine red alloy wire. I think we'll probably do the epoxy next time. And for now we're just going to work on crafting these components. So all of the motors and pumps etc. And also I'll make, I think maybe I'll do 24 processor assemblies. No, that seems a bit excessive. Maybe I'll just do the 16. Okay, so after some crafting, I gathered up the materials for our processor assemblies. These are going to run in the assembly machine. This is actually getting quite a lot again. Here we go with Greg Tech. But uh, I really should get organised here. It's actually kind of embarrassing how messy things have gotten. But don't worry, don't worry. I asked you to trust me with this base design and it's changed. Same with all this, it's probably going to be rebuilt at some point. In fact, it will be rebuilt. Anyway, there's our processor assemblies. Next we have to work on these components, so it's going to be a whole lot of copper. I think I might have to go mining for more copper. Stainless steel we have loads of. Steel rods, I might have to get some more iron for that. And then gold we have a lot of. Uh, this is more steel. So yeah, I'll definitely have to grab some more iron and also copper. I have a feeling this might take me a while. I'm not in a rush, I'm just, I'm sure you guys don't want to see me just uh, opening and closing chests for hours and end <laughs> looking for stuff that I know I have but don't know where it is. So I'll be back when I've made some progress on the quests. Uh, I don't know how long that'll take me but hopefully the DML will be leveled up by then as well. Aha, there's our quest for the circuits. Okay, so after a mining trip, I managed to get the materials for a stack of motors. Stack of HV motors. Quest complete. Well, not quite. There's a, there are a few more steps to go. Uh, we also need the robot arm. I have a bunch of things made up here. So we'll do the pistons as well. Uh, maybe not that many. We'll do eight to start with, but we have the resources for more. There's also some conveyors. I'll make uh, four to start. And some robot arms. I'll just make the two for now. Just missing some pumps, which is some steel rotors and screws I think I'm missing. Alright, so there's some rotors and some pumps. There, I'll take it up to 12 there. So that now completes that quest. Uh, that probably didn't seem like that long for you, but that was... That took me like two hours to do that, so... Um, yeah. Let's go check on the data model to see how, how far it's been leveled. So we're currently at superior tier. I think superior is going to be fine just to get us started in blood magic, so we have to make this digital mob agonizer also. There is the agonizer. And we'll also need an alter linker. Next thing we want to get is a weak blood orb. So we need one of these gems from Astral Sorcery. Luckily I've had a few of these sitting here for a couple of episodes now actually, so I guess we'll, we'll take the orange one. So I'm not entirely sure how this works. If we place this mob agonizer here, we're missing a data model, we can do that. And then link the altar. Is it just shift right click? It says it's linked. I think we'll have to power this. So we'll put a spectre coil on there. And now producing blood. Oh yeah, you can see in our blood altar we have... Oh yeah, it's draining. I wonder why the life essence is draining. I think it's probably because we've ha we've got an incomplete altar. So the tier 1 I think has to have the 8 runes next to it. So we need another 4 for that. And to get runes we need uh, blank slates. Which can be turned into blank runes. Among other ones. But the blank slates are kind of an interesting recipe actually. So we have to mix nocturnal powder, arcane stone and life essence. For one blank slate. So this is not very cheap at all. The nocturnal powder, some illumination powder, coal, black dye, and lapis. Oh, now we have life essence in here. I was gonna, I was gonna say, how do we get the life essence for the slates? Because we need it in liquid form. 
get it from these apples. Um, can we just pi directly pipe out of this? Oh yeah, we can. Okay. So I only have enough for two right now, but the quest will give us some more. So there's eight more there for blank runes. And now we can make our weak blood orb with this shard, or the gem. So if we just put the gem in the altar, this takes 2,000, I believe. Maybe it won't have enough, actually. Hopefully the time in the bottle can fix that. So basically the way the blood altar works is, if it doesn't have enough blood in it to complete the craft, the craft will go backwards. But it looks like it's able to keep up with the time in the bottle here. Any minute now it should change. There's weak blood orb, and we can bind it to ourselves. Collect our quest rewards, that gives us some sacrifice runes. So the next thing I would like to work towards, I'm not sure if we're going to get to it today, but I would like to be able to craft this peace candle. There's currently two things we don't have yet from this. Uh, one is the severance reagent, and the second is the corrupted glitch hearts. So let's start with the glitch hearts. And for that we need to do the trial keystones that we made earlier on. But starting the trial is going to spawn a bunch of mobs, and my gear is currently not exactly ideal. So the first thing I want to get is a new sword actually. So I think I'm just actually going to go for a diamond sword. Uh, there is some better options, but this has very high base attack damage. And I was thinking about making the grindstone from astral. This thing. So we need some... Oh, it's just some marble and planks. So with this, we first of all get a quest. And we can also grind down our sword. So right now we have 7 attack damage on there. If we spin it on this grindstone a bit... We can see it's 15% increased damage and we'll also want to enchant this as well. And fortunately our simulation chamber here produces this overworlding matter and this we can consume to gain levels. So you can see my levels are going up. Oh, Bane of Arthropods, that's probably not what I want. Okay, let's just do a book to clear it. Oh, I wonder what Twisted is. I don't think I've seen that before. Sharpness 5 though, I'll... we definitely want to grab that one. Unbreaking, should we do it? I don't think we can get access to this for quite a while, so I'll go for the 45. Unbreaking f 6, Leech 2. And we'll stick Sharpness on there as well. Let's see what else we can get for this. Temptation, I'm not sure what that is. We got another Sharpness, we can add that as well. Yeah, I think a lot of the good enchantments are locked behind this level 60. And the level 61 requires the Hell Shelf, which we're not, we're not going to be getting that anytime soon. I managed to get two sharpness 4s, which give me two sharpness 5s. So we'll take a sharpness 6 first of all, and we'll put that on there. I also got this venom enchant, which also poisons mobs, so that'll be really good. And we're up to 10.5 attack damage with poison and leech. I think honestly I'm just going to go for it and try it. Um, I want to do it on enderman, so we're going to need an ender pearl for that. And then we also have to attune the trial keys. The reason I wanted to do Enderman is because the zombies can hit really hard with their enchanted gear in this pack. And they also have like armor, so I think they'll actually be more tanky than the Enderman. But first we have to find one. Okay, I got one to craft the data model, now we have to attune the keys. So to attune the keys, we have to equip the Enderman data model, and then just kill one with the trial keys in our hand. Why is it you can never find mobs when you're looking for them? <laughs> I swear this game knows. Aha, I see one, finally. I have no clue where he went though. Oh look, there's a creeper on a spider. <laughs> I love that. Oh man, where does this enderman go though? Ah, there he is, there he is. Oh, that was a different one. He was full HP there. Okay, the keys are attuned. I have three of them here. I don't know if we're going to do all three. But we just need a big flat area for it. We'll put in the keystone and start the trial. I have... I do have regen and hopefully this venom will help. Oh, wait a sec. <laughs> uh... Maybe it, maybe it has to be 
Oh, I I was misremembering there. Yeah, we have to take it up to self-aware first before we can do this. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Oops. That was death number 16 here. Yeah, they're really racking up now. I, I did die quite a lot building this, rebuilding this base. Okay, well, since we have to weigh in the data model, why don't we just finish off today by checking out a dungeon I found? So, there's a dungeon entrance right here. I found it while I was looking over for the oil over here. I marked it on our map, so I think we're going to go and check that out. And I suppose we'll also make uh, some data models for each of the overworlding mobs. The creeper, I'll make a witch. And a spider, we'll level those up while we're in the dungeon. In all honesty, we're probably way under geared for this and we'll probably die, but <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. And hopefully there's some interest in loot in these. I think the dungeons in this pack have custom loot that the mod uh, authors put in. And there's also ones on the moon and on, on, yeah, on different planets also, which have very, very good loot apparently. So let's see what we got here. This is some interesting blocks from X Tones. I haven't actually checked our astral perks for a while. So we do have seven available perk points that we haven't taken yet. Oh yeah, I also added this gem to our armor, which gives us movement speed, life, armor, and runic shielding. This is one of those gems that you can grow with the starlight that we made earlier. I think I'm going to take this miner's delight, which places torches for us. And that will, uh, it's going to light up behind us so that we don't have mobs spawning. Oh, that was that was a close call there. But I think the plan, yeah, you can see we have lighting being placed. Well, that was convenient. <laughs> I think I have to take out these cave spiders wherever the spawner is for that. Yeah, just grab the spawners whenever we can. Okay, first chest is disappointing. Very disappointing. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's the cave spider spawner. Second chest is also very disappointing. We seem to actually be holding up okay. Our gear might be a bit better than I thought it was. And this sword's actually fairly decent as well. I can two-shot most things. Oh nice, apparently we can get nocturnal powder in here. This is what we were using for the blood magic slates. So that is really useful, it means I don't have to craft illumination powder. Man, these chests are getting more and more disappointing, look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's still nothing so far. It's, it's actually a bit easier than I thought it was going to be though. There's not quite as many mobs. But apart from this uh, elimination powder and nocturnal powder, there's not been that much. Oh, there's actually lapis blocks here. Well, we'll definitely take those. That's some free lapis right there. Aha, that's more like it. Oh, this is cool. Twilight Cloak. I've never seen this before. Makes you invisible in darkness. Well, uh, I don't think that will really work with our astral perks there. What we got? Impulsion Wand. We also got these block of black bronze that spawn in here too. I don't know how difficult this is to get, but uh, I'll take free metals. Needs to go through the vacuum freezer. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be taking this. Blitzrod quest. Okay, that was a bit too close for comfort. More lapis? Man, when all the mobs start getting potion effects like this, that's when we could be in trouble. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Let's get some regen going. Oh no, we might be dead. This could be the end. Splash potion. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We're regening. There is a witch back there though.
Oh, I, I think I died to life mending there. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. That zombie hit so hard. Uh, well, I guess I got a bit of a trek to go. Okay, I made it back to the dungeon entrance. I have some very basic gear that I found in my satchel. Let's see if we can get our stuff. I think I have to play this slow here. I don't think I want to rush this. We're only 30 blocks away though. So hopefully we can get... Man, the skeletons are the worst. Oh, I found this blueprint. Only found in dungeons. Awesome. We'll check that out in a sec. Thing is, I don't have any regen. Okay, made it back to m take off these leggings though. I don't want to die to that. We got our stuff. Most of it, anyway. I think some of it's still on the floor there. Oh yeah, you can see. Yeah, look at all that stuff. I'm going to have to go sort through that. Okay, I went through the rest of that dungeon. Um, a few close calls again, but... Yeah, this is basically what we got for the loot. There's um actually some nice items in here. Standout items are probably this alchemical bag. This is a really big bag. I'm assuming we can um, enchant this also. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Anyways, I think this is where we're going to wrap it up for today. I've been super busy over the last few days with uh, the move this week. So hopefully after the weekend it'll be uh, full steam ahead, more or less. I'm really excited to get into HV and keep progressing here. Next time we're going to tackle epoxy though. Uh, so until then, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more FTB interactions.